that even the volunteers you learn from, we have a lot of volunteers. Volunteers are past graduates that come back to teach you and also to relearn what they've learned and learn even more. Because every course, even though it's very structured, every course is slightly different. Right? Number two is real estate. That's the second asset class. I love real estate, but I prefer business. Right? But even investing in real estate, you still have to build a business. It has to be done through a limited liability company. That's the major difference between this side and this side. In this side, they invest in everything under their name. On this side, business owner investors, they invest in everything through a limited liability company. Everything through LTD. For legal protection, to get it from taxes, to protect their money, everything. Right? They use corporations. That's what the rich do. And that's what people who are becoming rich do as well. So do the same thing now. Let's follow the formula. Right? So, um, third asset class is paper assets. So this is all the stocks, bonds, major funds, CDs, hedge funds. This is the risk case of all assets. Because you have no control over paper assets. But we talk about it after. So this is the cash pattern of a rich person. And all we simply do, everybody in cash flow is doing the exact same thing. We're super busy because all we're doing is just buying more and more assets over and over and over again. We want multiple sources of income. Even if we have a business, it should make us money. If we have a real estate property or properties, it should be making us money. We have paper assets, hopefully making money. We have no control, but it'll still make money. So we want multiple sources of income. Right? When you look at the richest people in the world, like Richard Branson, for example, you all know Richard Branson, Virginia Airlines, Richard Branson has over 350 businesses. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's his businesses. We don't know what his real estate is. I know we have an island in British Virgin Islands that makes him 20,000 pounds a night. That's how much he charges for people to stay at this island. And it's booked for like five years. Yep. Very popular. He tapped into the super rich worldwide. And he said, hey, you should come and stay on my island. It's really nice. I walk around naked all day long. He always said to be able to eat. He loved to be going on. To be going he was. <laughs> you know, he was like, ha, ha, ha. Richard Branson is a But he is rich. And he's constantly built. Up to now, he's still building business. Right now, Virgin, Virgin Galactic is his next big project. That's the um, space tourism. You can carry people to orbit, float around for 15 minutes, and come back down and charge him, what, 20,000 pounds or something like that. Again, that's crazy, but you know, he's going to be rich. Multiple source of income. So we attend sales seminars. We attend leadership courses just so that we can buy and grow more and more assets. Right? I only have four businesses. I'm small fry. You have plenty of cash flow members that have way more businesses than me. I am sticking. I am moving to, I personally find I'm moving too slow. Thank you, John. It's so awesome. Hey, Marvin, you're supposed to send somebody. Yeah. So, all we do is attend seminars, we attend courses just a little to buy more assets. We want more real estate, more businesses. Right? That's why the agents join Remax and stay with Remax because they want to learn as much as they can about real estate and make money doing it. And then invest in other businesses and increase their sources of income. So, they don't just increase their income, they also increase their sources of income and increase those incomes as well. So if you have a three bedroom house, for example, and the current price you rent it for is $3,500 a month, what can you do to your house to charge $5,000 a month? Renovate. Renovate? Oh. Hey, Marvin. Oh, Johnson, I'm there. Yeah? Okay. For your yeah. house with uh, the air conditioner alone, but the things that will attract people to see where you're going on, need to come and live in this particular time. Like I'll go in front by front gates, gate. electronic gates, gate. cameras throughout the house, um, furniture, furniture, furniture. Wi Fi, air conditioning, carpeting, um, a cleaner. Yeah. It comes in, oh, the people love that. We have a cleaner by us. In my apartment building, anybody wants water? See? No, 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 free, 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 free. I'm <laughs> snacks. I'll pass this. I'll pass you all around. You can take. You can take snacks. I'm snacks in Don't be shy. Don't be shy. That's actually for you. All of that. Pass it around. Especially this girl. Yes. Potato chips. Yeah. So, 
So you can rent a pity house and you'll be able to charge $5,000. I have a friend from South in Gulfview, right? He had a house for rent. He was charging $5,000 TT a month, right? And then back in the back in the late 90s, that was plenty money. $5,000 a month for a house? Wow. Right? And then my boy decided, I am going to target experts for my house. So he started charging $5,000 US. The expats oh, and he got away with it for like two years straight having expats staying in his home for 5,000 US a month for two years. Man makes so much money. That's simply because he understood that he has full control over his real estate investment. He can just do things to his property so he can charge 5,000 US a month. And the things you can do to charge 6 and 7,000 a month, right? Um, with paper assets, the sales are slow or or the stock is down, what can you do to raise the stock? I want to ask a question and put it into um, the 5,000 bracket. Uh -huh. What if the person only runs for four months and then decides to drop? Get rid of them and get a new one. <laughs> well, in, in the real estate industry, when that happens, we usually sign one year lease. One year leases. In the day before the one year lease, they don't get a security deposit back. So the owner doesn't lose too much money when they move and they have enough money to fix up the place and yeah. So what is um with paper assets no, I'm good. If, if you buy if you buy stocks in a company and the price is low, what can you do to raise the price of the stock? Actually nothing. That's it. You have no control. You buy a mutual fund. The mutual fund grows at 3.5% return. Wow, 2.5%? In this recession, that's so amazing. Do you have any control whether the price goes up or down? Mind you, in cash flow, we have a 30% return and over. 30% return investment and over. Right? And that is not BS, that's real. That's actually quite low. In real life, we have a higher than that. Right? Um, once you learn how to calculate return on investment, you realize that investing is literally everywhere and there are opportunities to invest everywhere. Literally, up everywhere, right? If, if business sales are slow, what can you do to pick up on sales? You create more buyers, how? How many people? Advertise. Advertise, yeah. Specials. Networking. Sales training. What else you can do? Send them the cash flow. Yeah, the next that's, that's how people do that. Start the next business. Huh? Start the next business. Start the next well. Yeah, you could do that, but I mean focus on any business that you're in trouble, right? That too. Or sell a new product. Or do a social media campaign. You have full control over your business. Right? So these two asset classes are by far the best asset classes to own, business and real estate. Everybody invests in business and real estate. If you have a staff of book, oh, downstairs in the library, because what my name is, I have a staff of book, book written by a staff of I told you, whole book is business and real estate, and of course family, family business real estate. And you mix them all together in a nice one big pot. What I'm just trying to tell you all is, y'all should do the same thing too. Aim for family businesses, you can't go wrong. Get your spouse or your wife or whoever to involve in the business. Get them involved. Don't just be a business owner by yourself. Do what the others are doing. The Jewish community, family businesses. It's in their culture. Right? The Syrian community in Trinidad, same thing. You know, the Jewish community I'm referring to is in New York and in Israel. It's embedded in the culture. They, they all know about is business ownership. You have to be a business owner. You have to own your own horses, or whatever the terms they use. Right? You have to own the stables or whatever. Right? So it's business, family business. Most successful businesses in Toronto they go start off as family businesses, all right? And they all, they, they, the grandfathers and them who started the businesses back in the days. Those are the ones who were riding around in their bicycles selling clothes, that's it. Right? You see their stories about it all the time. And then later on they become Jimmy Abood and this and that, and, right? But the sales they start off with, sales. You work for Gordon and Page, I remember, back in the days. Right. So Gordon and Page, are they still around? Right, you own up what on the page. What is it, Syrian, local, white, local, white? All right. And what? It's personality. Cheerful, grumpy, huh? Very nice. Strong in sales? 
Mr. Gold. Mr. Gold. Uh huh. Start off and say I'm sure. Yeah. He started the company or his grandfather started? Or his father started? Oh, he started. He started it? Yeah, they worked at Xerox. Yes. Oh, they worked at Xerox? Within sales? Yeah. Aha. I did not know those things before. It's very easy to break down. Yeah. If you, you know Lana, huh? Lana products, you should know Lana, huh? You want to buy them to be in your place. It's a coronavirus, right? But guess what? Langston Roach, who built Lana, huh? if you ever talk to him privately, ask him, when did you learn to sell? How long have you been in sales? If you ask him that question, you see the smile on his face like, how you know I was in sales? He was selling since he was seven years old, if you ever tell his story. He went to university with my parents, my mom and dad, right? And I remember my mom said, give me the story of Langston. Why at university? They, my mom and dad were dating at the time, you know, going to, not the mall, just shopping and wherever, you know, and you see Langston, going in and out of stores in Langston, what are you doing? He said, man, I sell it soap. I go in the next store right there. And then about Langston, you knew you know, you don't need to you don't need to do that. He's like, nah, I wanna build business, I'll continue with you, but I wanna build this business. Langston Roach is almost a billionaire by now, if he's not one already. Very, very wealthy guy. You just see him, he looks totally normal, he just drives a white person in his pants. But he's you know, ish. But he has multitudes of real estate investments. A lot of businesses, he's chairman of the board now, he no longer runs Lander as per se, he just does his strategic thing. Right, but he's a wealthy guy. Start off in sales, just like everybody else in sales, right? So letting this and this together puts you in a different, different line. Like, so for example, my friend Deborah there, well, who are picking on tonight plenty because she just joined the team recently. She's starting both cash flow and sales training this weekend. At the same time, you know, I never really saw anybody do it at the same time before. So uh, uh, you know, I'm kind of excited this what happen. Normally, people do cash flow first. And then they do sales training, right? So, let me take this off. So this is very easy to understand? Yeah? Okay, perfect. So, I want to bring on a good friend of mine, business partner, John. Yes. What's up, my brother? So John and I both run the company called the Sales Trainer Academy, right? I met John about five, was it five years ago? About five years ago? Yeah, five years ago. He did cash flow and of course, um, at first he did not he did not agree with what we were teaching. So after the second session, the second session I remember, he came up to me and I said, Raj, I understand what you're trying to do. It's a good mission. But you ain't have me. You ain't got me. I don't agree with hundred percent of what you're teaching. I said, John, that's okay. You know, you don't have to agree with everything, you know? But I asked my smile on my face. The week after no, two weeks after he came up to me again, he's like, Raj. <sighs> I said they get into you now, eh? He said, yeah. I know, no, he's involved heavily. So, John, take it away. All right.